Well, good evening. Good. Habaria Gioni. It's so good to see all of you. I'm so delighted and honored to be here tonight. When Bishop told me that he heard the Lord that I was to come back to Nairobi, I immediately quickened in the spirit. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. And it was such an honor for me to know that Bishop heard God that I was to come back to Nairobi. Deliverance Church of Zimmerman, you have my heart. And I am truly honored to be here tonight. I do not take tonight as something that's common. I believe that God is going to do something uncommon that is going to shake your life Na, and you yako. will never be the same Na, for the rest of your life. Yako yote. Hallelujah. Amen. So tonight I want to honor your bishop, Bishop Jimmy. I honor you. Pastor Alice, I honor Na, hata, uh, you. All the pastors and bishops, I honor you tonight. For we have gathered today to have a manifestation of his presence. Amen. 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 I want to pray quickly before we go into this word tonight. That there will not be any hindrance by any demonic forces. Father, Baba, I thank you that I get to be used as an oracle tonight. Holy Spirit, speak clearly. Let your Shekinah glory rest in this atmosphere tonight that it would unhatch potentials that have been laying dormant in your people's life. I thank you. I thank you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight I felt very, very sensitive and very clear that I am called to tell you who I am. Tonight I want you to know who's speaking before you. I know my apostolic calling. For I've been blessed to oversee many ministries in the United States. I've also been honored to be a professor at a university. And I teach pneumatology, which is the Holy Spirit. I've been blessed to have a wonderful wife that stands in ministry beside me. Dr. Donita Hale. Uh, Dada, Dr. Bonida 
ill. And she sends her greetings to Na you. Salamu zake ya leo. As a matter of fact, she's watching tonight. Na kabisa, na raifu, uh, Johnny Jema. It's daytime there. Uh, kule ni mchana, sahizi. Along with our ministry. Ka, ka pamoja, na huduma yetu. But tonight, I want to tell you who is standing before you. Lakini jioni ya leo natamani kakueleza ni nani anayesimama mbele yako. I am a man Mimi ni mwanamme who had an unusual journey. Amba nimekuwa na safari sio ya kawaida. A man who came from an upbringing of a single home. Um mwanamume ambaye ame ame amelelewa na na mzazi mmoja. My mother gave birth to me when she was 19 years old. Mamangu alinipata akiwa na miaka 19. She was going on 20. Alikuwa karibu anafikia miaka 20. And my father did not stay with her. He left. Na babangu hakukaa naye alitoweka. My mother and I grew up together. Na mamangu na mimi tukakuwa pamoja. And I would watch my mother struggle and make ends try to meet. Na nika uh, tazama mamangu akijisukumia ndani ya maisha kutafuta uh, riziki yetu. There was a time kuna wakati that my mother and I was so in struggle kuna wakati tulikuwa ndani ya shida kubwa mimi na mamangu that we were grateful to have bread sandwiches. Ya kwamba tulikuwa tunaomba kupata mkate kidogo. I remember that my mother was struggling so bad Na mamangu alikuwa nasumbuka sana. The when I was a child I, I looked at her. Nikiwa mtoto mdogo nilimtazama. And I said mom. Na nikamwambia mama. One day. Siku moja. I will take care of you. Mimi nitakushughulikia. And she looked at me and smiled. Akanitazama akatabasamu. At that moment she did not know if I was telling the truth or not. Ah, wakati ule mamangu hakuelewa kama nilikuwa namwambia ukweli ama la. At that moment she knew that I loved her and I was tired of seeing her struggle. Na alipoelewa ya kwamba nampenda na niko ndani na husika na shida zake. But I was determined. Lakini nilikuwa nimeamua to make my confession kufanya uh, lile tangazo langu line up with the conduct of my life aha lilingane na na, na na laini ya maisha yangu and though i made lots of bad decisions na hata ingawa nimnaweza kuwa sikutimiza zile tangazo zangu zote god reminded me what i said out of my mouth at 6 years old Mungu akanikumbusha vile nilikiri ya kwamba nampenda mamangu nilikuwa miaka 6. So every time I was in the wrong place. Kwa hivyo wakati wote ningejipata pahali pasipofa. The words that came out of my mouth. Yale maneno iliyotoka kinywani mwangu would resonate back in my mind. Inge inge kaa ndani ya akili zangu. And why am I telling you this? Na ni bora niwaambie haya yote. Because it does not matter where you start. It matters how you finish. I've come to a realization that I will not let excuses keep me from my future. Because I have a God that is the ancient of days. Before I began, He already finished my course. And tonight, I declare and decree that someone that's in this place will not fail in their journey. Even when it looks like all hell has brought loose, you will not fail because God is with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight, I heard Bishop say 
that the theme of this gathering is the bridegroom edition. And the Lord said to me, son, I want you to talk about the bridegroom edition. Ningetaka unene juu ya hii edition ya Bwana harusi and generations na vizazi amen amen before i go to this word i want to let everyone know all the pastors ningetaka kabla sija ingia katika neno ningetaka wale wachungaji wako hapa na maaskofu god has graced my wife and i to write a book that will assist you in teaching impartation. And correct ordination. And this book has been designed for those who know they are called. Called as deacons, as ministers, elders, and pastors. If you are interested in the book, we have it available outside. Ziko I pale inje. And we are discounting the book na na hiki because the book on Amazon is a lot more money. Sababu, uh, Amazon, iko, inachota pesa mingi. It will be 2,000 shillings because it is a training manual. Sababu, ni kitabu cha kukusaidia, uh, Kufundisha. Amen. Amen. So I want to give this to somebody tonight. This one I have in my hand. I see two hands. Whose birthday is it this month? Did you come? You came and got it. Go get it. Praise God. Amen. 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 He took it by force. Amen. 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 Are you ready to get into the word tonight? Amen. Let's get into this word. Let's go. Genesis chapter 17. Verse 7. We're going to be going to a few scriptures. Because I am a teacher by nature. And my prayer is that everyone in this place will come to an understanding of what God is saying about you. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 17, verse 7, it declares, this is God talking to Abraham. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is an everlasting covenant. I will always be your God. And the God of your descendants after you. Amen. Amen. Psalms chapter 78, verse 5 through 8. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. 
which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children that the generations to come might know them the children who would be born that they may arise and declare them to their children. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now all the glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever milele, and ever. Na milele. Amen. Amen. Psalms chapter 139 verse 15 it says you watch me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Ah, Petero wa kwanza mstari wa pili mlango wa pili mstari wa tisa. For you are a chosen generation. Lakini nyinyi ni kizazi kilichoteuliwa. A royal priesthood. Ukuhani wa wa kiungu. A holy nation. Taifa lililotakatifu. His own special people. Watu wake wa 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 Speciary, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last scripture for now. John chapter 2. Yohana mlango wa pili verse 7 Mstari wa saba. This is Jesus talking Huyu ni Yesu anaongea He says to his mother Mary Anamuelezea um, mama yake He says says to them fill the water pots Yesu akasema akanena na wao akawaeleza jazeni um Chombo na maji, and they fill them na waka, up na waka to the brim. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Some, Amen. Some hallelujah. This topic is bridegroom edition. Though I know that I gave you many scriptures. Hii ni edition ya Bwana Harusi na ninajua na ninaelewa nimewapa maandiko mengi. They will all tie together. Zote zimeshikamana. Hallelujah. Amen. First of all, you must understand kwanza lazima uelewe that the word edition ya kwamba neno edition is a version of a published text or book. Imetolewa katika hali ya kuandikwa kwa vitabu. So we are reading the bridegroom's 
bridegroom's pub published text or book. Ni kama sisi ni kitabu ambacho kimechapishwa juu ya bwana harusi. We are reading a pattern. Tunasoma um, andiko ambazo zinaenda sambamba that confirms that God is strategic. Ya na zinakuja kutuelezea kwamba Mungu ni mwenye mipangilio. He is methodical. Yeye anaweza. And our God is intentional. Na Mungu wetu huwa ako na nia. Say that with me. God is strategic. Aha, sema pamoja nami ya kwamba Mungu wetu ana mpangilio. He is methodical. Na yeye ana mamlaka. And he is intentional. Na yeye huwa ako na nia. In other words, you are a result of God's agenda. You are a result of God's agenda. There is no happenstance. There is only meaning meaning with your life juu ya maisha yako hallelujah amen so in this topic tonight kwa hivyo katika hili somo jioni ya leo we're going to look at the story of abraham tunatazamia hadithi yake abraham abraham was known as the father of faith Abraham akajulikana kama baba wa imani because Abraham came out from his kindred. Sababu Abraham alitoka kwa watu wao. In the book of Genesis chapter 12. Na katika kitabu cha mwanzo 12. The Bible declares that God spoke to him. Ni kwamba Biblia inasema akamnenea Abraham Mungu. And he hearkened to his voice. Na akamwongelesha na sauti yake. And he came out from amongst his kindred. Na akatoka kutoka kwa watu wao. At that time na wakati ule Abraham was 75 years old. Na, li, na wakati ule mia, umri wake Abraham ulikuwa miaka 75. He took his wife Sarah. Akamchukua mke wake Sarah. And he took Lot which was not the intention. Na akambeba Lot hata ingawa hakuwa kwa mpangilio. In, in chapter 13. Tukifika mlango wa 13. Abraham and Lot. Abraham na, lo, na Lutu separated. Iliwabidi watengane. In chapter 14. Tukifika mlango wa 14. Abraham rescued Lot. Abraham akamkomboa Lutu. Hallelujah. Amen. In chapter 15. Tukifika mlango wa 15. God speaks to Abraham and gives him a covenant promise. Mungu anamnenea Abraham na ananipa agano la Mungu. As far as you can see, uh, kwamba utazama na jinsi utaweza kuona, I will establish your name as a father of nations. Nitaliweka wakfu jina lako kama baba wa mataifa. Hallelujah. Amen. At that time, na wakati ule, the Bible declares in chapter 16. Biblia inasema katika mlango wa 16 that God did not speak to him. Ya kwamba Mungu hakumnenea. Abraham is now 86 years old. Ibrahim amefikisha miaka 86. So from 75 to 86. Ameitwa akiwa miaka 75 sasa yuko na miaka 86. He heard the voice of God. Akasikia sauti ya Mungu. And at 86 alipofika miaka 86 he did not hear the voice of hakumsikia, god hakumsikia sauti ya mungu tena let me deal with something today nataka kushughulikia jambo fulani hapa leo it is good that when you hear the voice of god you understand ni vyema unaposikia sauti ya mungu uelewe but what do you do when god is silent lakini je mungu anaponyamaza unafanya nini abraham took it upon himself Abraham akachukua kama jukumu yake to hear the opinions of his wife Sarah. Na kumsikiza mawazo na mafikira ya mke wake Sarah. That she would give him Hagar. Ya kwamba atampa Hagai to go into his tent. Na aingie kwa hema yake and to produce a child. Na wapate mtoto 
Because from the age of 75 to 86 Sababu kuanzia ukiwa miaka 75 kufika 86 Nothing took place in the tent. Hakuna jambo limetendeka. There was no birthing. Hakukuwa patikana matunda. There was no results of the word. Hakukuonekana matokeo. That was spoken in his life. Yale kuhusu yalionenwa juu ya maisha yake. Yet when God speaks Lakini tuelewa kwamba wakati Mungu unena It will not return void. Haiwezi kumrejea Mungu bila kutenda kazi. For God's word is truth. Ni sababu neno lake Mungu ni ukweli. And God is the essence na Mungu ndiye truth. Ndiye kiini cha ukweli. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truth will break through time. Ukweli utasimama nyakati. When it is time na wakati unaofa but truth before time lakini ukweli kabla ya wakati can seem like a lie yaweza kukaa kama ni uongo let me say that one more time hebu nirudie hiyo tena truth before time ukweli kabla ya wakati wake can seem like a lie yaweza kuonekana ni kama uongo abraham heard the voice of his wife abraham akasikiza sauti ya mkewe sara that her opinion made him make a decision. Na pale pale akakata kauli. That Hagar would go into his tent. Ya kwamba nitaenda Hagar ataenda kwa hema yake. And God did nothing about it. Na Mungu hakutenda lolote kuhusu hili jambo. God could have stopped it if he wanted to. Mungu angelisimamisha angetaka. But God was letting Abraham know. Lakini Abraham Lakini Mungu alikuwa amemwambia Abraham that I do not need your assistance. Aha, Mungu amemwambia Abraham hahitaji msaada wake. So he let him go through the motions of his opinion. Sababu yeye hakumuuliza process ya opinion yake. And who were around him. Na hata wale waliomzingira. He hearkened to the voice of his wife. Akasikiza sauti ya mkewe Sara. It sounds familiar. Inasikika kama tunaielewa. Adam hearkened to the voice of his wife. Abraham akasikiza akasikiza sauti ya mkewe. Does not mean that the women are bad, you are good. Sasa hiyo ni kumaanisha wanawake wote ni wabaya, hapana, nyinyi ni wazuri. You just cannot allow. Lakini hauwezi kuruhusu someone else's opinions. Ile mawazo ya mtu mwingine make your decisions for you ikufanye ukate kauli ukiweka kama ndio msingi yako Abraham thought Abraham akawaza that Eliezer would be the one ya kwamba Eliezer mtumishi wake angekuwa ndiye mrithi wake and God was saying to Abraham na Mungu akamnenea Abraham without saying it by voice na kwa sauti he was saying to him akamnenea that I am letting you see what's inside of you before I move before you. And God has showed me over the course of my journey. That my opinion and my thoughts has nothing to do with his plans. So if God spoke greatly while Abraham's opinion still spoke. Ah, kwa hivyo Mungu aliponena hata wakati Abraham alipozidi kunena. It would be a great war in his head. Aha, Mungu agalinena wakati Abraham amekata kauli ingekuwa ni vita kali katika mawazo yake. And there are times family. Na kunao wakati the God will allow your opinions Kuna wakati Mungu atakuruhusu wewe utumie mawazo yako to die before he moves in your life. Aha, ataruhusu mawazo yako yafe kabla ameanza kutawala maisha yako. That's why Paul said. Hivyo ndivyo Paulo alisema that the just must live by faith. Ya kwamba wenye imani and not by sight. Wenye haki lazima aishi kwa imani lakini sio kwa kuona. That means by comprehending Ya kwamba kuelewa kwangu because faith does not live in time. Ah uh, imani haieleweki na wakati. Faith lives in eternity. Imani haishi kwa wakati, inaishi milele. 
your opinion yale mawazo yako when it comes to an end ikifika mwisho then you will see that god will move because you have yield to whatever he wants to happen aha sababu imeishi mawazo yako yamefika mwisho tena sasa mungu ataanza ili akamilisha mawazo yako yake juu yako so now abraham has ishmael kwa hivyo sasa katika hii hali Abraham amempata mtoto Ishmaeli and Ishmael has grown up na Ishmaeli amekua at 13 years old akiwa miaka 13 in the book of Genesis chapter 17 katika uh, Genesis uh, mwanzo 17 the bible says that God speaks to Abraham when he was 99 years old Mungu tena anamnenea Abraham akiwa na miaka 99. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that it was a visit of three angels. Aha, Biblia inanakiri hii kama ile kutembelewa na malaika watatu. Many theologians believe that one of the angels that were speaking were Jesus, was Jesus. Aha, wengi wasomi wa Biblia wanaamini ya kwamba mmoja ambaye alikuwa ananena kati ya wale watatu alikuwa ni Yesu. And the angel said to Abraham. Na malaika akamnenea Abraham that Ishmael is not the chosen. Ya kwamba Ishmael si yule wa agano. Though because he came from you. Ni sababu alitoka hata ingawa alitoka kwako. He will still be a great man. Na ni sababu ni mtoto wako bado atakuwa ni mkuu. But that was not the plan of God. Lakini hiyo haikuwa ndiyo mpango wake Mungu. He said akanena that your wife Sarah Ya kwamba mke wako Sarai will have a child atampata mtoto and the bible declares Na Biblia yanena that Sarah laugh within herself Aha Sarah aliposikia yale akacheka ndani yake and that the angel of the lord heard her laugh Na malaika wa Mungu akasikia kile kicheko And the reason why she laughed Na sababu alipocheka is because she has now become older. Ni sababu saa hii hata amezeeka zaidi. The Bible says that she said within herself, you're going to do this now. Aha, Biblia inasema akajiuliza ya kwamba Mungu utatenda haya sasa. Where my husband has gotten old? Aha, bwanangu akiwa na umri wa miaka 99. And I'm old too? Na mimi bila nimezeeka. She laughed. Akacheka. Which indicates inaonyesha that there was nothing going on in their tent. Ni ni kumaanisha hakukuwa na uhusiano wa Sara na Abraham katika hema yao. Because if it was. Sababu ingekuweko she would not have laughed. Hangecheka. Am I right? Ni kwa hiyo ni kweli. Mm. Mhm. So she laughed. Kwa hivyo akacheka. And God knew. Na Mungu akaelewa. That this would be difficult for them. Ya kwamba hii itakuwa ni ngumu kwao. But the Bible says. Lakini Biblia inasema. That the angel of the Lord says, is there anything too hard? Na Biblia inasema malaika wa Mungu akawauliza kunalo jambo lilo kwake Mungu. Is there impossible? Kuna jambo haliwezekani. For the Lord. Kwake Bwana. And I can imagine her saying Now? Na, na ninatazama najiweka uh, katika hiyo hali na namuona Sara akiuliza sasa. I'm going to get pregnant now? Mimi nikuwe mjamzito sasa? Where were you when I was in my 60s? Sasa singekuwa afadhali wakati nilikuwa na miaka 60. Where were you when I was in my 50s? Ulikuwa wapi ya Mungu nilipokuwa na miaka 50? Maybe even in my 70s. Hata hata afadhali nilipokuwa na miaka 70. But I am 98 years old now. Sasa ni na miaka 80 plus sasa. And some of you in here today. Na kuna wenye wako hapa katika hii bahali leo are like Abraham and Sarah. Muna, muko tu katika hali ya Sara na Abraham. You've allowed time. Muko na wakati to make you not believe. Ili muweze kuelewa. The promise is still available for you. Ya kwamba Mungu bado If he can produce something from Sarah and Abraham. Ikiwa anaweza kuleta matokeo kutoka Abraham na Sarah. I don't care how old you are. Nisijali wewe uko na miaka mingapi. If you are 50. Ikiwa uko 50. If you are 60. Ukiwa na 60. If you are 70. Ukiwa na 70. If you are 
80. Even if there's somebody that's 90, God will still produce what he will produce in you. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? We have allowed time to be our schoolmaster. We've concluded because time has gone by. Well, I'm almost at a place of retirement. I'll just give it to somebody else. No, Abraham. Hold on to the promise. Let me, let me talk to some pastors tonight. God says he will give you land that you did not build. He'll give you land that you didn't ask for. Houses you did not build. He will give you anything that has been designed for you to walk into. And God wanted Abraham to know that it's really not about you, Abraham. It's about the generations that you carry. The generations that you carry. Someone put your hand on your stomach and say, I'm carrying generations. Say it again, I'm carrying generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I am convinced with all of my heart that the people of God need to know that we are just one part of the puzzle that we all play a significant role so we are one part of the puzzle that's why the devil wants to take you out. Because if he stops you, he stops everything that you carry. But God will not allow that to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a generation that I came to speak to tonight. There are two levels of generations that are in this place. There's a generation that are boomer babies. Baby boomers. Boomer boomer. <laughs> And those are the ones that have been given responsibility to speak in the lives to those that are 15 to 40. I need to do something tonight. Everyone that's 40 and older, please stand. Wale abao ni zaidi ya miaka arubaine simama. <sighs> you are in my age bracket. We have been given a responsibility to impact a generation that's not next but a generation that is now. Have a seat. Those that are 15 to 40. Stand on your feet. Come on, stand up. Stand up tall. Stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is exactly what God told me to say. You are not the next generation. You are the now generation. You are the generation. 
that will be the most radical generation that the world has ever seen you are the generation that God has put in the window of time that will make a difference I declare tonight will be a night that you will be touched by the Holy Spirit and you will not be the same after tonight's conference have a seat let me tell you something that God said to me he said son when Moses had Joshua walk with him he was 24 years old 24 years old when Jesus was called into ministry he was 30 years old because the Levitical priest based upon the law must be 30 years or older. So Jesus waited to be 30 Sasa Yesu alingojea awe miaka 30 in order to step into his priesthood. Ili akasimame katika nafasi yake ya ukuhani. John the Baptist Yohana mpatizaji was 29 years old starting his ministry to prepare the way for Jesus. Jesus chose his disciples the sons of Zebedee which names were John and James. John was 18 years old. Yohana, miaka James, his brother, was 22. Yakobo, alikuwa nae, miaka Matthew, the tax collector, Madayo, ambaye, was 29 years old. Alikuwa miaka Bartholomew, Bartholomew was 26 years old. Miaka sita. All of the disciples that were called except Peter were under 30 years old. Peter, based upon the scholars, have said that they, he was between 40 to 45. What is my point? My point is this generation that's 15 to 40 don't realize that God has called you to have a voice. Not a voice. Yeah. Not a voice for the world. But a voice for the kingdom. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we, my generation, Na sisi kizazi changu, have been given a responsibility jukum, to speak in your life. Kunena maishani mwenu. Even when we see nothing that's good coming out, Ata kama hatuoni jambo jambo we are still called to speak life Tumeitua kunena uzima. and not death. Na sio kifo. So I declare to you that the men and women that are here that has been given authority to lead the way will speak the things that will water your potential. There are seven things that God gives out Please write this down. Come on, Holy Spirit. Number one, he gives covenant. Number two, he gives destiny. Number three, he gives instructions. Number four, he gives land and property. Number five, he gives plans. 
ya tano anapatiana mipango number 6 he gives resources ya sita anapatiana rasilimali and number 7 he gives gifts or gifts na ya saba anapatiana karama amen amen so these are the things he's in dizo mambo that when god has chose you ambapo mungu amekuchakua wewe gives to you anakupatia wewe that nothing that is before you ya kwamba hakuna chochote ambacho kiko mbele yako can stop what you are called to birth out kitasimamisha chenye umewekwa uzalishe hallelujah hallelujah glory to god utukufu kwa yesu abraham was the father of faith ibrahim alikuwa baba wa imani and the Bible says that we are the seed of Abraham. Na Biblia inasema ya kwamba sisi ni mbeku ya Ibrahim. That we are the seed, the blessed of Abraham. Sisi ni mbeku ambaye imebarikiwa ya Ibrahim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. Biblia inasema katika wakalathia 3, 29. It says, and if you are Christ, ya kwamba kama nyinyi ni wa Kristo, then you are Abraham's seed. Sasa nyinyi ni mbeku ya Ibrahim. And heirs according to the promise. Na waridhi kulingana na ahadi. So you are the seed of Abraham. Wewe ni mbeku ama uzao wa Ibrahim. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6. Wa Efeso 3 mstari wa 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Ya kwamba mataifa wakue waridhi pamoja. Of the same body. Ya mwili moja. And partakers of his promise in Christ. Na wausika katika ahadi katindani ya Christo. Through the gospel. Kupitia injili. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what it is confirming. Sasa Biblia inathihirisha. That we have been given access ya kwamba tumepewa mlango wazi to the body ku to the body kwa mwili yes yes listen very careful careful hebu nisikize kikamilifu the reason why i call this generations wakati uh, sababu ya kuita vizazi hivi because generations are the desires of God. He is a God of generations, a generational God. Kwa sababu fizazi ni kiini cha mungu. Mungu ni mungu wa fizazi. Someone say he is a generational God. Mtu aseme mungu ni mungu wa fizazi. One more time, he is a generational God. Mara tena, mungu ni mungu wa fizazi. Everything you do. Kila kitu ambacho watenda. Everything you say. Kila kitu unacho sema. Will not just impact or stop your life. Haita komesha ama kudhuru maisha yako tu. It will either impact or stop the generations. Ita dhuru ama itasimamisha vizazi. And what the enemy tries to do. Na chenye adui anafanya. Is put you in a whirlwind. Na anakueka katika upepo wakifulifuli ama kisulisuli. Will you think it? only about your own issues ili ufikirie tu mambo yanayokuhusu wewe peke yako but god is a god of promise lakini mungu ni mungu wa ahadi he said i will never leave you nor forsake you anasema sitakuacha wala kukupungukia david said if i make my bed in hell thou art with me daudi anasema hata nikiweka kitanda kusimuni wewe uko nami there is no place you can hide from god hakuna mahali utajificha kwa mwenyezi mungu and the bible declares na biblia yatangaza before the foundations of the earth were formed kabla ya misingi ya dunia kuundwa we were chosen tulichakuliwa in other words, Kwa maneno mengine, you and I have been predestinated sisi mbele before we came forth uh, kabla ya out of our mother's womb. Kutoka kwa tumbo za mama zetu. Jesus, Yesu, being at the first marriage that he attended, the first marriage, Akiwa katika ndoa ya kwanza yenye aliudhuria, was with his mother. Alikuwa na mamake. And the Bible says na Biblia yasema, that they ran out of wine. Ya kwamba mfinyo ukaisha. In John chapter 2 verse 1 through 8. Katika Yohana 2 moja mpaka 8. 
And Mary came to Jesus. Na Maria kaja kwa Yesu. And said to Jesus, Aka, Jesus. Akamwambia Yesu. They've run out of wine. Mfinyo umeisha. He replies and says, woman. Na yeye akasema mwanamke. What do I have to do with this? Mimi ni na sehemu gani ya kufanya kwa haya? And this is what he said. Na hii ndio alisema. My time wakati wangu has not yet come. Haijafika. Everyone believes. Kila mtu anaamini in most occasions. Kwa wakati mwingi that he was talking about miracles. Ya kwamba alikuwa akiongelea But it had nothing to do with a miracle. Lakini haihusiani na miujiza. It had everything to do with marriage. Inahusikana na ndoa. For those who understand Jewish customs, wenye wanaelewa desturi ya ki Kiyahudi, it was the bridegroom's responsibility. Ilikuwa ni kazi ya bwana harusi to have the wine for those who were celebrating. Akuwe na mfinyo tosha kwa wale ambao wanasherekea. So for the bridegroom to allow the wine to run out ili bwana harusi aruhusu mfinyo kuisha it was his responsibility to get some ilikuwa wine. ni jukumu lake atafute apate ingine jesus understood the traditions of jewish weddings yesu alielewa desturi za kiyahudi that they were called to get the wine ya kwamba waliitwa kukuwa na mfinyo yet his mother came to him and asked him to do a miracle lakini mamake akaja kwake kumwambia atende mjiza. Why would Mary the mother of Jesus ask him to do a miracle? Kwa nini mama wa Yesu Maria aulize Yesu kutenda mjiza? If it was the first miracle. Ilikuwa mjiza wa kwanza. Obviously it was not. La, lakini haikuwa because she must have seen him do other miracles as he was growing older. Kwa sababu inakaa alimuona akitenda miujiza mingine akikuwa. And she knew he was able. Na alitambua ya kwamba yeye anaweza to do exceedingly. Afanye mambo makuu abundantly. Zaidi more that she could ask or think. Zaidi ya yenye tunaweza uliza ama kuwaza. So it wasn't about the miracle. Sasa haikuhusu mjiza. It was about the wedding. Ilikuwa kuhusu ndoa. Someone say the wedding. Mtu aseme ndoa. Come on say it one more time the wedding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus understood. Yesu akaelewa the Jewish customs. Desturi za Kiyahudi. When Jesus told his mother my time is not yet woman. Wakati Yesu aliambia mama yake wakati wangu haujafika bado. It was not time for me to claim my bride. Haikuwa wakati wangu wa kuleta mchumba wangu. One thing about Jewish weddings. Kitu kimoja kuhusu uh, harusi za Kiyahudi. The bridegroom goes and choose his bride. Ni bwana harusi anaenda anachakuwa bi harusi. What confirms? Ambaye inadhihirisha. When a man finds a wife. Ya kwamba mwanamume anapopata He finds a good thing. Anapata jambo ama kitu kizuri. So Jesus knew who his bride would be. Sasa Yesu alitambua bi harusi wake ni nani. He told the disciples in John chapter 15 verse 16. Akachakua wanafunzi wake katika Yohana 15 sura ya mstari wa 5. That you did not choose me. Ya kwamba haukunichakua. But I have chosen you. Lakini niliwachakua nyinyi. And ordained you. Na nikawaweka wakfu. That you should go and bear fruit ya kwamba mkaende na mkazae matunda and that your fruit should remain na matunda yenu yakabaki that whatever you ask ya, the father ya kwamba chochote mtakachouliza baba in my name katika jina langu he may give you atawapeni In other words it is another example kwa maneno mengine ni mfano mwingine of the jewish marriage ya ndoa ya kiyahudi because when the bridegroom would go out and find his bride ya kwamba bwana harusi anapoenda na kupata bi harusi when he knew this was the one atajua ya kwamba huyu ndiye they would have a betrothal uh, itakuwa ni kule kuchumbia someone say betrothal mtu aseme kuchumbia 
Betrothal is a former state of engagement. Kuchumbia ni kuweka halisi usiano wao. That he has come and he has asked for her hand. Amekuja na ameuliza mkono wake ama uhiari wake kwa ndoa. If she agrees. Anapokubaliana. It's called a katubak. Inaitwa Kotuba. Someone say Kotuba. Kotuba. Which means this is a Jewish marriage contract. Ambaye inamaanisha ya kwamba sasa wameingia kwa contract ya kuoana. And it outlines. Na inamaanisha. The rights and responsibilities. Ya kwamba kuna sehemu ya mambo ya kutii na kuwajibika. Of the groom. Ya bwana harusi. In the relations to the bride kuelekea mchumba wake so when she agrees anapokubalia kubaliana naye if she agrees they sign the contract anapokubaliana naye wanaandikisha chini ama wana and as weka, soon as she agrees na wakati punde tu anapokubali he gives her a ring anampa pete and she places it on her finger na anaweka kwa kidole chake and once when she places it on her finger na anapoweka kwa kidole chake after she agrees wakati amekubaliana they pour a cup of wine wana mwaka uh, kikombe cha divai and share it with one another na wanashiriki moja kwa mwingine even though the marriage was not consummated hata kama ndoa haija uh, halalishwa the wine ile mfinyo seals the deal inaweka mhuri na tia mhuri magano someone say the wine mtu aseme mfinyo seals the deal inatia mhuri magano yao jesus when he told mary yesu alipoambia maria that my time was not yet ya kwamba wakati wangu haujafika bado was dealing with his bride alikuwa anakabiliana na biharusi wake that he was not called to give wine yet ya kwamba hajaitwa kupatiana mfinyo bado because he did not give himself over to her yet kwa sababu hajachitoa ama kupeana kwake bado come on holy spirit uh, santa rom takatifu whenever wakati wa, you look back in the bible in genesis wakati unaangalia kwa biblia kutokea mwanzo you will notice utatambua that when adam was formed ya kwamba adam alipoumbwa eve was with him awa alikuwa naye but she was not yet formed lakini hakuwa ametengenezwa yet she was in the body lakini alikuwa kwa mwili ule when god laid her when god laid adam on the ground wakati mungu aliweka adam katika nji it was a form of foundational truth inafanyika kama uh, ukweli wa ki, wa msingi and foundational stability na msingi dhabiti asante So then Adam was laid down. Adam akawekwa chini to produce akazai what was in him. Ambacho kilikuwa ndani yake. Which mwake. was his wife. Ambaye Eve, ni mke wake Awa. Which confirms ambayo inadhibitisha that the man was meant to be the foundation of the family. Ya kwamba mtu ama mtu wa kiume alitengenezwa awe msingi wa jamii. Because God laid him down. Kwa sababu Mungu alimweka chini ili akaondoe. And when Adam woke up he said, "Woo, soki soki." <laughs> Na Adam alipoamka akasema, "Wala la he." He said, bone of my bone mfupa wa mfupa wangu and flesh of my flesh na mwili wa mwili wangu he was turned on yeye alikuwa anastajabika he did not talk to the animals as normal ha, hakuongea na wanyama kikawaida he was talking to his bride alikuwa anaongea na bi wherever swa. she was he was file uh, alipokuwa ndipo apo haleluya haleluya When you find a wife you find a good thing. Unapopata mwanamke unapata kitu kizuri. Jesus understood. Yesu alielewa that he had to give his body. 
alikuwa apeane mwili wake over to his bride kwa biharusi wake hallelujah hallelujah listen to me nisikize adam had to lay down and give his body adam ilikuwa aweke chini mwili wake ndipo atoe mwili wake jesus had to hang high to give up his body Yesu Kristo ilibidi asulubiwe juu to his bride mwili wake ndipo atoe biharusi wake so the cross was him giving his body mwi msalaba ilikuwa ya kutoa mwili wake to his bride kwa biharusi wake it was him saying you are worth it ana ilikuwa yeye kusema ya kwamba unastahili hii That's why the Bible tells us in Ephesians. Niposa Biblia inatuambia katika wa Efeso. That men you are to love your wife. Ya kwamba wanaume mpende bibi zenu. Christ loves the church. Kama Kristo anavyopenda kanisa. Because he died to himself. Kwa sababu alikufa kwa kanisa. To make sure his bride knew she was loved deeply. Ajue ya kwamba bi harusi wake anampenda zaidi. And that's why. Niposa That the Bible says that men are the head of the wife. Niposa Biblia yasema ya kwamba wanaume ni kichwa cha mke wake. It does not mean he rules her. Haimaanishi ya kwamba anamtawala. It means he is to be an example of Christ for her. Inamaanisha ukue mfano wa Kristo kwake. And his role is to lead the way. Na kusudi lako ni kuongoza njia. Na she can lead too. Na she can lead too. Na pia yeye mke anaweza ongoza. Because the Bible says. Kwa sababu Biblia yasema that they are to submit one unto another. Ya kwamba mchitisheni mmoja kwa mwingine. And we must understand. Na lazima tuelewe that God is calling us to have clarity. Ya kwamba Mungu anatuita tukue na uwazi. That the seed of Abraham ya kwamba mbeku ama uza, kizao cha Ibrahim was not just about him all the way to David haikuwa tu yeye mpaka kwa Daudi because the bible says in Matthew chapter 1 verse 17 kwa sababu biblia yasema katika madhayo 1:17 Abraham to David was 14 generations kutoka Ibrahim mpaka kwa Daudi ni vizazi on and it says from David until captivity na, in Babylon na Biblia inasema ya kwamba kutoka Daudi hati kwa umateka Babiloni are 14 generations ni vizazi 14 and from the captivity of Babylon until Christ na kutoka umateka kule Babiloni mpaka Kristo are 14 generations ni vizazi 14 so we are listening and we are seeing that there are 42 generations sasa tukiangalia tunaona ya kwamba ni vizazi connected to Christ and Abraham ambazo zinaunganisha kwa Kristo na Ibrahim and God had to get Abraham's opinion out of the way na ilibidi Mungu apate Ibrahim ili akafanye kwa bigger than him na aone ya kwamba hii kitu ilikuwa kubwa kuliko yeye this seed was bigger than him hii mbeku ilikuwa zaidi ya yeye this seed but go down to generations unto Christ hii mbeku itaenda katika vizazi tofauti and Christ would carry the seed into us that we are the body of Christ. Na Kristo akaja kwetu kama mbeku ambaye na kutufanya sisi kama mwili wake. So God is a God of generations. Sasa Mungu ni Mungu wa vizazi. And when you forget about what he is. Na ukisahau chinzia yeye yupo. You find yourself in particular places. Unachikuta mahali fulani. That will make you feel as if he's forgotten you. Na utachikuta ya kwamba unafikiria ya kwamba But somebody say out loud God has not forgotten me. Ah mtu aseme Mungu hajanisahau. Someone say it again God has not forgotten me. Mtu aseme Mungu hajanisahau. Matthew chapter 26 verse 29 I'm almost there. Mathayo 26:29. Karibu natamiza. Matthew chapter 26 verse 28 it says but I say to you lakini naambie ni nyinyi I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day sitakunywa tena tena tunda hili la msabibu that when I drink it new with you 
mpaka vile nitakavyokunywa tena na nyinyi in my father's kingdom katika ufalme wa baba yangu in other words he says i'm going to have communion now na kwa maneno mengine anasema sitayatenda haya sasa but the next time we will drink together lakini tutakapokunywa tena We will be in the kingdom of my father. Tutakuwa katika ufalme wa babangu. And my bride and I will celebrate that we are triumphant. Na biharusi yangu na mimi tutasherekea. That we were more than conquerors. Ya kwamba sisi ni zaidi ya washindi. And you carried everything that I called you to carry. Na umebeba kila kitu ambacho nilikuita wewe kupeba. To glorify my name. Ili ukutukuza jina langu. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 25. Wakorinto wa kwanza 11:25. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Yesu. In the same manner Paul is writing to Corinth. Paulo anaandikia wa Korintho anawaambia kwa chinzia hii ile ile. He also took a cup of after supper. Akachukua kikombe baada ya saying this cup akasema hiki kikombe is the new covenant of my blood ni akano jibia la damu yangu this do as often as you drink it fanyeni hivi kila mara mnapokunywa in remembrance of me mkinikumbuka mimi someone say drink it as often mtu aseme kunywa kila wakati as as often kila wakati in remembrance of me mkinikumbuka mimi jesus says when you drink that communion yesu anasema unapokunywa you are reminding una kumbuka unachikumbusha that you are agreed with the contract ya kwamba wewe unakubaliana na ule yale maagano the contract says i am your savior and lord Ma- agano uh, inasema ya kwamba mimi ni bwana na mwokozi wako the contract says i am your redeemer Uh, magano inasema mimi ni mkombozi wako the contract says i accept you as my bride magano ni ya kwamba nakubaliana na wewe kama bi harusi wako and because of it na kwa sababu hiyo i'm giving you an engagement ring mimi nakupa pete ya kuchumbiana that's better than gold or silver ambayo ni zaidi ya dhahabu ama fedha i'm giving you the holy ghost nakupa wewe roho mtakatifu That will be the royal diadem. Ambayo ni that when the when the devil sees you. Ambayo shetani akikuona wewe, he will see I'm with you. Ataona ya kwamba mimi niko na wewe. He will see I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Ataona ya kwamba siwezi kukuacha wala kukutukia. He will see that when you ask in Jesus name. Ya ataona ya kwamba una jina la Yesu. That you've been given access to the Father. Na umepatiana njia kuelekea kwa Baba. Because the engagement confirms that the royal diadem is in you. Kwa sababu yeye anadhibitisha ya kwamba ule kipepeo cha ufalme kiko And he will never go dull. Na ha He will never go dull. Na ha, hataweza kufumilia. He is the ingenuity yeye akoazi that will prepare you um, na atakuandaa to not have spots or wrinkles ili usikuwe na kunyanzi wala mawa because the world wants you to keep your last name kwa sababu dunia inataka but i call you to change your name la mwisho you are my child lakini mimi nabadilisha wewe ni son of the living god wewe ni mwana wa Mungu aishi you are the temple of god wewe ni hekalu la Mwenyezi Mungu and the enemy wants you to walk around with no oil in your lamp na adui anataka utembee ukiwa bila mafuta as if christ is not coming back for you kana kwamba Yesu Kristo harudi tena kwa ajili yako kama aliacha he is coming back yeye anarudi tena and he's coming back with a- for a bride anarudi tena kwa biharusi wake without spot or wrinkle ambaye hana maua wala kunyanzi and i know bride of christ na najua biharusi wa kristo there are times you've gotten dirty kuna wakati fulani unakuwa na uchafu fulani there are times that things have splashed on you kuna fitu fulani zinachishika kwa the blood of jesus lakini damu ya yesu will cleanse every area that tries to keep you dirty and spotty. It's the blood. 
that confirms that we are his children and his bride. Hallelujah. I am the bride of Christ. And I'm declaring to you that some of you have been waiting for a breakthrough. And the Lord said, don't throw in the towel. Just like Abraham. Abraham was throwing in the town and he birthed Ishmael. Ibrahim Ali but our God is strategic. He's methodical. And he is intentional. He is strategic. Methodical. And intentional. In other words, God knows what he's doing. God says, I've given you gifts. The Bible says that your gift will make room for you. There are two things that it says. It says it will make room for you. And it will bring you before great men. But it did not say. It will teach you how to behave. There are times. There are times. That God will make sure that your behavior. Balance with your gifting. And there are times that when you hear a prophetic word, don't you let that enemy make you think it's not coming to pass. Your bishop has declared an open heaven in 2019. I said your bishop declared an open heaven in 2019. God is not finished with 2019. Don't you give up yet, Abraham and Sarah. Don't you give up yet. The year is not over yet. Don't you birth Ishmael's and don't you give up. Eliezer, your gift. The time is still at hand. And God is still waiting because he has unfinished business that he has not finished. Did you hear what I said? I said, don't you give up yet. Don't be like Abraham. Or Sarah. Abraham believed God. Ibrahim alimwamini Mungu. Sarah laughed. Sarai akacheka. Abraham was known as the father of faith. Ibrahim alijulikana kama baba wa imani. As a matter of fact, when God told Abraham you will have a son this year, wakati Mungu aliambia Ibrahim utakuwa na mwana mwaka ujao, he said bring it on. Yeye alisema ilete. That's just paraphrasing. Hiyo ni roho. To the degree. Kwa kiwango that when Abraham's body was touched by God. Because this was not Abraham's seed coming out. It was the miraculous movement of God birthing the seed. But when he touches reproduction system. Whatever he touched it will not die again. Because the Bible says that even when Isaac was born and began to grow and Sarah died the Bible says that Abraham had more children because when God touches something it will not die die. It will keep on producing and keep on producing 
and I don't care how old you think you are you have something inside of you that's called to reproduce I don't care what people have spoken about you if you think that it's time to retire there is no retirement in the kingdom of God you will continue to produce someone said I am called to reproduce Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the reality, Katika ukweli, as I close, ninapomalizia, the Lord shared with me many, many years ago Mungu alinena nami miaka kadha iliopita, that words reproduce. Ya kwamba maneno yanajisalisha. That it's very important ni kitu cha muhimu sana that you understand that you keep your mouth in line with the word of God. And tonight, as I close, I want to leave you with this. There were four events in the upper room. Four events. Mambo ama man, mambo ma, manne. This is very symbolic and very important. Ambayo ni ya mfano na ni ya muhimu. The first event in the upper room was the last supper. Jambo la kwanza katika chumba cha chuu ni chakula cha mwisho. The second event was the washing of feet in the same room. La pili ni kuoshwa mikuu ama kutawazwa. The third event after Jesus resurrected, came out of the tomb, he went to the upper room because that was where they were hiding. Na jambo la tatu, wakati Yesu alifufuka, alienda kwa chumba jachu, kwa sababu alikuwa wanachificha pale. And then the last event in the upper room is when the Holy Spirit descended with power and fire. Na tukio la nne, ni wakati roho mtakatifu, alikuja kwa nguvu, Na kwa uweza, which this upper room is confirmed na hiki chumba jachu kikatibitika, that it was big enough to hold a hundred and twenty people ya kwamba kilikuwa zaidi ya kushikilia because watu everything moja ishirini, in the upper room kwa sababu kila kitu katika chumba jachu was touched kili, by the Holy Ghost kilikuzwa na roho mtakatifu and the Bible says they begin to speak in unknown tongues. That the fire of God rested upon their lives. And tonight as I close Na usiku wa leo I decree and declare in the name of Jesus nina kiri na nina tangaza katika jina that we Yesu. have two generations that are sitting among each other ya kwamba kuna vizazi viwili ambazo zimekaa pamoja and we are called to be supporters of one another na tumeitwa tukaweze kushikiliana moja kwa mwingine we are called to be life savers tumeitwa tukaweze kuokoa maisha we're called to have passion more than polish. Passion more than polish. In other words, when you have passion, men and women of God my age, you will not allow the young people issues to stop you from loving them unconditionally. You will have passion over polish. Because people do not care how much we know. Until they know how much we care. And God is saying to me tonight. That you're not here by mere coincidence. That you're not here by, my, by mere happenstance. But God is ordained this moment in this time. For those who feel they don't have a voice. For those 
who think no one cares about you. Kwa wale ambao wanafikiria hakuna mwenye anawajali. For those who have made multiple mistakes. Kwa wale ambao wamefanya makosa kadhaa. I'm speaking to you. Ninanena nawe. For those who do not feel love. Kwa wale ambao wanahisi I'm speaking to you. Nanena na wewe. For those who've never had any support to move forward. Kwa wale ambao hawajapata kuenda mbele. Nanena na wewe. For those who feel that there is no purpose in life. Kwa wale ambao wanahisi hakuna kusudi maishani mwao. I'm speaking to you. Nanena nanyi. And God had me come. Na Mungu alifanya nije. To tell you people. Kuambia ninyi watu. That he is ordained this moment in time. Ya kwamba ameweka wakati huu. That the first will be last but the last will be first. Ya kwamba wa kwanza atakuwa wa mwisho na wa mwisho atakuwa wa kwanza. He chose me. Na akanichakua mimi. A least likely individual. Mtu ambaye si stahili who came from a unusual situation ambaye alitukia kwa uh, mahali ambapo hapawezekani who had a very challenging upbringing ambaye alikuwa na changamoto la kulelewa is now using everything that i experienced na sasa anatumia kila kitu ambacho nilipitia to be a blessing in someone else's life ili niwe baraka kwa maisha ya mtu fulani because it's not about me kwa sababu sio kwa sababu ya mimi it's not about my generation sio kwa sababu ya kizazi changu it's about you ni kwa sababu ya wewe Someone say it's about me. Mtu aseme ni kwa sababu ya mimi. You are the generation. Wewe ni kizazi that God has saved for now. Ambacho Mungu ameokoa sasa. You are the generation. Wewe ni kizazi that will be atmosphere changers. Ambao watabadilisha hali ya anga. Because you will believe God. Kwa sababu utaamini Mungu. Come on, I want you to stand on your feet today. Hebu simama kwa mikuu zako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to grab someone's hand. Leave no hand untouched. Usiache mkono ambao haujakuzwa. No hand untouched. Mkono See, us- this is the challenge with the church. Everybody wants to be preached to. Kila mtu anataka preached to aubiriwe but not want to be touched lakini hataki kukuzwa we are a generation of people sisi ni kizazi cha watu it doesn't matter what color or culture you are haijalishi wewe ni rangi gani au utamaduni gani we are all covered gani. under the blood of jesus sisi tumezalishwa kwa damu ya yesu which means we are family kumaanisha sisi ni jamii I am my brother's keeper. Mimi nina hifadhi nduku yangu. I do care about your future. Ninajali usoni pako. I will give you my time and advice. Nitakupa wakati wangu na pia maoni yangu. If you do not succeed. Kwa sababu kama hautafaulu We my generation failed. Sisi kama kizazi chetu tume So you are important to me. Kwa sasa wewe ni wa muhimu kwangu. You are important to Bishop and Pastor Alex. Wewe ni muhimu kwa askofu na mchungaji. You are important to the pastors that are here in this place. Wewe ni muhimu kwa wachungaji ambao wako hapa. You are important. Wewe ni wa muhimu mno. And we have taken a vow before the lord na tumeweka nadhiri na mungu that we will fight on your behalf ya kwamba tutapika vita kwa niaba yako and we will not allow you to fail in your journey na hatutaruhusu wewe kushindwa katika mwenendo wako if you just listen to the people that God's brought before you that has wisdom utakaposikiza tu watu ambao mungu ameweka mbele yako wa hikima and listen to their counsel by the word of god na usikize kwa mashauri yao kwa neno la mungu i promise you na kuahidi that if you listen ya kwamba utakaposikiza you are guaranteed wewe una uhakikisho success ya kufaulu what happened in my life chenye kilitendeka maishani mwangu god surrounded me with people mungu alinisungushwa na watu that saw something in me ambao waliweka kitu ndani mwangu 
that I did not see in myself. Na mimi si chenye sikuwa nacho ndani mwangu. And they warded me with words. Na wakanielekeza kwa maneno yao. Where I begin to believe that I could do anything. Na nikaanza kuamini ya kwamba naweza kufanya chochote. Because Christ was for me. Kwa sababu Kristo ni kwa ajili yangu. So ya. as you hold that hand tonight. Sasa unaposhikilia mkono ule usiku leo. This is an indication. Hii ni aliko that we are a generational people ya kwamba sisi ni watu wa vizazi that must succeed in our calling ambacho lazima kifaulu kwa mwito wao that there is no big eyes and little u's ya kwamba hakuna chicho ambalo haliwezi tumika only jesus ni yesu is the big eye uh, ni chicho kubwa only jesus ni yesu gets the glory ambaye anapata utukufu There are times family kuna wakati jamii that I've told many of my spiritual sons and daughters ambao naambia wanangu wa kiroho that my wife and I have been given the grace to oversee in churches ambao Mungu ametupa neema ya kuwatazamia katika Though I have an assignment to be a father to you hata a father to you hata kama uh, kama baba kwenu I am not better than you mimi sio afadhali kwa niaba yenu I just have a responsibility to Mimi nina jukumu tu So as you squeeze that hand squeeze it Unapo finyilia mkono ule You are squeezing something that's alive Wewe unaweka uhai au unafinyilia kitu ambacho kiko na uhai I want you to let go of the hand Nataka uachilie mkono Your right thumb on your left wrist and press it Weka kidole chako cha kulia kubwa uweke ufinyilie mkono wako wa kushoto what do you feel wewe unahisi nini do you feel a pulse do you feel a pulse someone say destiny has a pulse come on say it again destiny has a pulse one more time unahisi has a pulse there's pulse there's power in the pulse kuna nguvu katika kupumua that means as long as your pulse is beating your heart is beating ina maanisha ya kwamba unaposikia mtundo ya moyo wako unaendelea ku generations have to come forth vizazi lazima vitokeleze father in the name of jesus grab someone's hand baba katika jina la yesu shikia kwa squeeze that hand hebu finyilie the name of jesus katika jina la yesu Father we intercede come on come Baba on pray in tongues Baba, pray for your brother pray for your sister we intercede for our generation we intercede for our sons and our daughters we intercede for the, the fatherless and the motherless and we fight and pray on their behalf We stand in proxy for their future. Tuna pika vita kwa sababu ya siku zao za mkusoni. They will not die but they will live. Hawatakufa, wataishi. Because we have been given the seed of resurrection seed. Kwa sababu tumepewa mbeku ya ufufuo. So we speak in dry bone areas. Na tunazungumza kwa mifupa iliyo that you will succeed in life ya kwamba utafaulu maishani mwako your future awaits you usiku zako za uzoni za kungocha and you will produce na wewe utazalisha what god has called you to produce chenye mungu amekuita kusalisha in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu i call wisdom in this hand na nena hekima katika mkono huu understanding in this hand ah kuelewa katika mkono huu knowledge in this hand ufaham katika mkono huu i call creative ideals in their minds creative ideals ah mawazo ya kubuni in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu and the rest of their story na kushinda hata dhurupa will be the best of their story wao watakuwa bora in jesus name katika jina la yesu amen amen come on let's give the lord our praise in this atmosphere tonight
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A praise that will take down the walls in your life. Come on. A praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A praise. Glory, 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 glory. Utukufu. Glory. Utukufu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 